So this video is for Monday's lesson and hopefully if you have to be absent, it will help you. Um, let me get going. We're going to start with the graph of the function uh, f of x, as you can see here. Um, we're going to go to a point x equals a. And one of the things that we have learned this year is that it's pretty easy for us to find the tangent line at that point using ideas of derivative. Well, today we're going to call this tangent line that we have in here the linear approximation of f at x equals a or the linearization of f at x equals a. And so that we don't get confused with y's all over the place, we're going to call the equation for that line y equals L of x. Okay, what's the big deal in here? We have been using tangent lines for a while now. What, why do we care today about doing a different lesson about this? The big deal is that as long as we stay in a neighborhood of x equals a, the tangent line, the linearization that we're finding, it's a pretty darn good approximation to the original function y equals f of x. And sometimes it's going to be much easier to work with the linearization, which after all is just a line, than to work with the original equation of the function f of x. So many times we're going to be interested in finding that linearization to be able to get approximations to the function without having to use a calculator or technology. Let's, let's see an example of this. We're going to find the linearization of the function f of x, the square root of x plus 3, at x equals 1. And uh, again, the main idea is that in the moment you read linearization, you know that they're asking you to figure out the tangent line. Just that simple. So we know how to find the equation of the tangent line. We know in order for us to do that, we have to figure out the point. Okay, well, they give me that x is going to be equal to 1. So if I plug it in, very easily I can figure out that f of 1 is going to be equal to the square root of 4, which is 2. So the point uh, of tangency has coordinates 1, 2. Now I need to figure out what's going to be the slope of this tangent line. To figure out the slope, I need to figure out the derivative. So, okay, I have in here x plus 3 to the 1 half. Its derivative is going to be 1 half, something raised to the negative 1 half, x plus 3. I'm going to take the derivative of the inside, I'm just going to get 1. So that means that the derivative at 1, which is where the point of tangency was, I'm going to have 1 over to the square root of 1 plus 3, which obviously is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2, and this whole thing is going to give me 1 fourth. That's the slope of the tangent line at 1, 2. So, my equation for the tangent line is going to be y minus y coordinate point 2 is equal to the slope 1 fourth times x minus 1. Or if you want to, we're going to call it again, like I said, L of x for linearization. And if I take these two to the other side of the equation, the linearization is going to be 1 fourth of x minus 1 and plus 2. Okay, our textbook says that in order for you to find the linearization of f at x equals a, the recipe is the linearization is going to be equal to the derivative of the original function at a, that was the one-fourth, times x minus a, that's the point of tangency, plus the value of the function at a, which for us was the two. So if you want to, you can memorize this formula. I don't think it's needed. You can just find the equation of the tangent line like we did and just take the two that we had in here to the other side. Anyway, so... Um, What's the big deal with this? The big deal is they want me to figure out an approximation for f of 1.1. Why? Well, let's see. Let's try to find exactly f of 1.1. If I plug in 1.1 into the original function, I would have the square root of 1.1 plus 3, which is the square root of 4.1, which is pretty nasty to compute. Without a calculator, I mean, I know that that's 2 point something, but how much is the something? So without a calculator, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't have a clue how much that is. But, but what I can do is I can say that I can approximate that value with the linearization of 
which is going to be using this formula that I have in here, it's going to be one fourth of 1.1 minus 1 plus 2. Or what is the same? 1 fourth of 0 0.1 plus 2. And now, if you're a fraction lover, you can do this as 1 fourth of 1 tenth plus 2. And you can tell me that the approximation of 1.1 would be approximation symbol would be one fourth times one tenth is going to be one fortieth so it'll be two and one fortieth if you don't like fractions another way that you can do this is you can come back in here and you can think of this one fourth as 0 0.25 and this one tenth as 0 0.1 and when you multiply those two out you're going to get 0 0.025 then add it to the two Another way to see this is that f of 1.1 it's approximately equal to 2.025 and that was not difficult and yeah it was a value of about 2 like I said but at least I have an idea how much above 2. Now the question is how good is this? I mean the, and, I mean, if, if I get something that is really far off from the real answer this is a waste of time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find the percent of error into this approximation. Okay, I know that you guys have done this in physics. How do we define percent of error? Okay, so when you approximate something, the percent of error is computed this way. is the absolute value of the exact answer that you would get minus the approximation that you were able to obtain, the whole thing divided by the exact answer. And then you take that and you multiply it by 100 to be able to put it as a percent. That's how you define the percent of error. So for the problem that we're doing here, how, how do we figure out the percent of error? Well, the exact answer for me would be the square root of 4.1. What happens when I plug in 1.1, which would be again the square root of 4.1. My approximation was 2.025. Again, the exact answer is the square root of 4.1 and then I would have to multiply that by 100. Then I would have to take a calculator and figure out how much this is. Now you realize if I can use a calculator, why the heck don't I just compute the square root of 4.1 and get the exact answer? So this is just an exercise on how good is my approximation. But if you take your calculator and you do this, I think that you would be surprised you get 0. 0.007%. That's an amazing approximation. This, this linear approximation was very, very good. It was very close to the exact answer. So, what I would like you to do now for practice is to figure out, to use the same linear approximation to find the value of the function at 1.4, to find an approximation for the value of the function at 1.4 and to figure out what will be the percent of error. Now in class, I'll give you time to do this out. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and just tell you what it is, the answers without working it out. This is an exercise for you to work it out. But um, what would happen in here is that the linear approximation at 1.4 will be equal to 2.1. And that means that the value of the function at 1.4 can be approximated as 2.1. Now, the exact answer, obviously, if I plug in 1.4 in there, would be the square root of 4.4. Well, guess what? If you figure out what is the percent of error for uh, these numbers that I have in here, what you will get for the percent of error would be 0.11%, which is still pretty good. It's pretty darn accurate, but it's not as good as the one before. And uh, I'm curious if you could tell me as for why do I have a larger percent of error? I'm going to ask you that to do that in class. To help you on that, let's take a look at what we have been doing. This is the graph of the square root of x plus 3. That's the point where we were working at 1. And this is the linearization of tangent line. Why were you getting a larger error at 1.4 than we were getting at 1.1? 1 .1? 
Well, because 1.4 is farther away than 1.1 from the point of tangency, and you can see in here that as you move farther away from the point of tangency, your error will be bigger. So uh, if you actually had to figure out an approximation for 6.2, what you would have to do is to find the tangent line at, let's say, 6, and that way you will be close to the approximation that you want to find. But the method still works. You just have to have your point of tangency close to the number that you're trying to approximate. Okay, let's look at this under a completely different perspective. So this example is going to be now very different. They give me this information about this function f, I'm sorry, h. Let me h of 3 is equal to 5. And carefully here, the graph that I have in there is the graph of h prime. It's not the graph of h. They want me to find the linear approximation at 3. Okay, so again, linear approximation is just tangent line. So I need to have the point. I have the point. They tell me here that h of 3 is equal to 5. So the point has coordinates 3, 5. And then I need to have the slope, which the slope I know is going to be h prime of 3, which I'm going to get from this graph. I go to 3, oh, h prime is negative 2. So the linear approximation is going to be the slope, negative 2, times x minus 3, I'm just using point slope, and then instead of having the minus 5 with all of x, plus 5. You have to be able to do this relatively fast. And now they want me to use this to estimate h of 3.1. Notice that the crazy thing in here, I don't even have a function for h of 3.1, but let's give it a shot. So h of 3.1 can be approximated as the linearization at 3.1. And the linearization at 3.1 is going to be negative 2 times 3.1 minus 3 plus 5. That's negative 2 times 0 0.1 plus 5. So the linearization at 3.1 is 4.8. And I can claim that even though I have very little information about h, h of 3.1 will be approximately equal to 4.8. All right, now something new. So what's this estimate that I got? Is it an overestimate? Is it actually bigger than the real answer? Or is it an underestimate? And that's me to justify. How the heck do I do this? We haven't looked at this before. Okay, so let's make a picture here to the side and let's take a look what happens. Remember, this is the graph of h prime. Let's try to sketch what will happen with h at 3, at the point of tangency that we're discussing. Let's say that h of 3 we're telling that it's 5, graph not to scale, let's say something like that. And now suppose the graph of h did something like this. And what we have been doing is find the tangent line at 3. That's the L of x that we were finding. Can you see how this graph, can you see how the linearization would be giving me underestimates compared with the actual value of the function? This will be the value of the linearization, this will be the actual value. Let's say that h of x, instead of that, would have this other look. Let's say that at 3, we got 5, but now the graph of h did something like this. Then when we did the linearization, this is the linearization, look at what would happen with the linearization now. I will be getting overestimates. This is the value of the linearization. This is the value from the actual function. So what does this overestimate and underestimate business depend on. It depends on whether h of x is concave up or concave down. I need to figure out what is going on around 3, whether the graph of h is concave up or concave down. So how do I do that for this problem? Well, back to h prime. Go back to 3. And look at what h prime is doing at 3. h prime at 3 is decreasing. Now we have seen that when h prime decreases, that means that h is concave down. And if h is concave down, I'm talking about this kind of picture in here, and that means that what I'm getting is an overestimate for this situation. And that's it. That's what I can tell. So if they ask me whether I, when I'm using a linear approximation, whether I have 
an overestimate or underestimate, that's equivalent to asking me whether the graph is concave up or concave down. That's our lesson. So uh, if you have a chance to watch this video, I would love for you to give me some feedback. So if you can send me a reminder or a email or something, you tell me it was terrible, I didn't understand anything, or it worked out great, or just something so I know whether this is something that we want to do again. I appreciate your help, and I'll see you again in class. Thank you.